Let's bring out the foam roller. What is this piece of kit and what is it for? Why use one? So many questions. Well, I'm going to be answering those as well as taking you through the essential exercises that you can do with a foam roller to help you get the most out of this rather wonderful piece of training aid. So what is this? Well, essentially, it's a piece of tubing with some sort of foam around the outside. However, there are plenty of other similar devices which you can use in the same way as a foam roller, such as a rolling pin style massage stick or a tennis or even a lacrosse ball. What then? is this actually for and why would you want to use a foam roller? Well, its effects are still debated as surprisingly there's actually not that much research on it, but it does basically act as a sports massage, although obviously it's going to be self-administered. So by rolling your body over the top of this and applying pressure to certain muscle groups and their surrounding connective tissue can help to increase blood flow to that area. It potentially can work on reducing adhesions as well as limiting muscle soreness and even helping to release some trigger points. So it is a form of myofascial release which is basically releasing the muscles and their surrounding fascia. Like I mentioned, scientific research on myofascial release is limited. However, you still see top level athletes regularly carrying around a foam roller with them and using it before a training session or as part of their recovery afterwards. And physiotherapists and coaches are often prescribing it. You'll see groups of athletes doing a foam roller session. So there must be some benefit, even if there isn't hard science there. And there have been a few smaller studies that have been able to show that it can help improve your range of motion and your flexibility and reduce muscle soreness, which then in turn will help with recovery. And all of this obviously adds up to helping with performance and it can even reduce the chance of getting injured. We've talked about the benefits of a foam roller, but you also need to be aware of the potential risks. They are small, but if you use it excessively, then it could end up leading to pain or muscle soreness and even bruising. And the same goes with the type of foam roller. So if you're using something too hard on an area that's really sensitive, say a hockey ball on a really shattered muscle that's close to the surface, then that could cause pain. So just make sure you listen to your body and you don't push it too hard. So how should you actually use a foam roller? Well, if you aim to work with it for 10 to 20 minutes, you can put that either ahead of a session, so it's part of your warm up, or afterwards for recovery. And there is no reason you can't actually do a standalone foam roller session, but apparently there's more evidence that supports incorporating it into your session will give you a little bit more benefit. And then you want to be applying a firm but not too hard a pressure over each muscle group for 20 to 40 seconds. Or if it's a really large muscle, then you might need to do it in sections as you go. But it's very much about listening to your body and finding out some areas won't feel the benefit, other areas you'll feel that are really sore to start with. And again, experiment with the type of foam roller and how just how firm you want it according to what part of your body you're foam rolling. It's time to take a look at the exercises and the foam roller is more suited to the larger fleshier muscles. So that's where we're going to be focusing today. So mainly on the legs and the hip area. So let's get going. Let's start with a big muscle, your glutes, and spending time working on this area is probably more effective than trying to actually release your ITB, which will often feel tight, but it's the muscles that run into that fascia where you can have more of an effect on. So there are three layers of your glutes. You're going to need to really make sure that you work in every single area. So it will be a matter of rotating your body on top of the roller. So you want to start by basically sitting on the foam roller with one of your buttocks, and from there, you're going to roll over and back on that area and then rotate so that you're right around on the side as well because your glutes do cover the whole of your bottom area. And if you want to then intensify that a little bit further, you can actually add in a stretch onto the glute that you're rolling. So you can place the other ankle up across your knee so you're forming a triangle with that knee and then you'll be able to feel a stretch in your glute and you can get in even deeper when you're rolling. And once you've fully rolled your glutes, if you then want to have a little roll in your ITB, I personally am a massive fan because whether it's doing anything to my fascia, I don't know, it just feels like a really nice release. Now your hamstring. So this group of muscles span the whole back of your leg. So they insert as far down as your knee and up 
into the top of your leg and your hip, basically underneath your glute. So it's a pretty long muscle, but you want to focus on the middle two thirds. So the muscle belly, the bit that's really fleshy, and you need to be careful as you get close to the tendons near the knee, because that could be uncomfortable. So you really want to focus on this main part here. So you're gonna start by simply lying one leg over the foam roller. You can even, if you want, start with both legs together. It'll be less pressure. But then when you want to really focus on one, you want to make sure you do the outside of your hamstring the middle strip and then the inner strip. That will require a little bit of rotation over the foam roller and you want to take the support of your body weight in your hands and in the leg that's not being rolled so then you can apply the correct amount of pressure on that bit of muscle. Your quads make up the largest muscle bulk of your legs, so they're gonna need the most work, most probably, and they will be quite tender, I warn you now. But as it is such a large muscle, you want to make sure you roll the full length of it, concentrating on the belly. But again, a little bit like the hamstrings, but even more so, you're gonna make sure you need to do it in sections. So I'd recommend almost splitting it into thirds. So you do the outer third, the middle third, and the inner third of your quads. And again, similar to hamstrings, you're gonna to need to actually take your body weight in your hands. So you're gonna be lying over the top of the foam roller with it resting underneath one quad and you'll use that other leg and your arms to take the weight off because full body weight can be really quite sore on your quads. Take your time to work the full length of your muscle with focusing any extra time on areas that feel tight or sore. Onto your calves and your lower leg is a bit easier to work on because obviously it's a much smaller area and I find my calves get really tight so I love this one but I start off by actually doing both calves together especially if you've got a wide enough foam roller because then you can ease in and just warm them up and find out which areas then want to have a little bit more focus and like all of the muscles we've talked about so far then take your focus onto that single leg and you will find by just rotating your legs slightly you'll just be able to work out which parts want to be worked but again work the full length of the muscle but be careful as you get close to your ankle because you'll be coming onto your Achilles tendon and you need to make sure you don't put too much pressure on that part of the calf. And once you've fully worked the back of your calf, you can actually flip over and focus on the fleshy part of the front of your shin. So obviously avoiding the shin bone on the inside, but the outside part is your tibialis anterior muscle. And that's fairly fleshy. You can also get quite tight and sore, especially if you're doing a lot of running on a hard surface. And I find it can be a really nice release to work on that too. We've covered the large fleshy muscles in the legs, so let's move up to the torso now. We're gonna focus on the lats. So if you have been doing a lot of swimming or maybe a lot of dry land gym work, then you could find you're getting really tight around the lat area. So this is quite a unique exercise and some people really like it, some don't. So maybe have a bit of an experiment with it, but you simply need to lie with the foam roller just beneath your armpit, lying over it on your side. And then from there, you're gonna roll your full body up over the foam roller all the way down to sort of the bottom of your ribs and back again. And it might feel a little bit too sensitive on your ribs, but do play around with the amount of rotation so that you can get onto the more meaty, fleshy part of your lats, so slightly further around to the back. But have an experiment. Let me know how you get on with that one. I always like to treat myself at the end of a foam rolling routine with a nice roll out over my middle back. So my thoracic spine, the sort of part which you'll spend a lot of your day in flexion. So whether you're at the desk or you're spending time on the bike, most of our posture tends to be in this direction. So any chance to get to open it up has got to be a good thing. And when you roll over your spine, just make sure you stop before you get to your neck and your lower back. But you might feel a little bit of popping or crunching noise. That's perfectly fine. It's just some nitrogen bu bubbles being released. And I do find it a little bit satisfying. Anyway, if you don't mind excusing me a moment, I can't resist. Oh. Oh, before I get too carried away, I almost forgot. Before you go, Remember that the foam roller might be a little uncomfortable to start with, but your body will thank you for it later. I definitely have a love-hate relationship and put off my foam rolling sessions, but right now I'm feeling really good. So if you've been sat on the sofa watching this, I urge you to get up and have a little bit of a movement and a bit of a stretch and experiment with the foam roller and let me know how you get on. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and you enjoy the feeling afterwards. Give us a like if you have and check out our social media channels and give them a follow.